right, let's see. <clears throat> so we have the mass and the radius of the cylinders. We have the angular speed and we're on a frictionless surface, the two or more identical non-rotating ball. Okay, so this surface, I guess, is what it would be frictionless. Or if this had like a, kind of like your lab, how the, this thing was spinning um, and there was not a lot of anything acting on it to cause it to slow down. So this thing is, is spinning, but there's going to be enough friction between these surfaces here that they will catch each other. Because if I, if like this were sl completely slippery right here, all that was just slippery stuff, then it would, um, this, these guys that fall down on top of it would just stay where they are and the bottom would be slipping out from under them. Um, and so, let me, hold on, one second. All right, so then one, determine the final angular speed of the system. So we have this conservation of angular momentum um, because there's only enough friction between them to cause them to um, kind of stick together. So. Anyway, um, so initially you have I of the first one, omega initial, and that's going to equal the whole set of them, I1 and I2 and I3. And they're all going to be moving together. And so then this is the a disk, so it would be one half of the 250 times its radius, 2.6 squared, times the 4. I told everybody the plan. Anyway, but all three of these are identical, so this would be 3 times, oh, wait a minute, that is just I, right? 3 times that big old I thing over here. It's going to cancel out. So if this was all just I, boom. Mm. And this is 3 times i, and then this would be omega. Does that work? So then I don't have to worry about any of that calculation. It would just be i times 4 is equal to 3i times omega, because they were all identical. I hope I haven't done this wrong. So then 4 thirds, nope, yep, is equal to omega, and that would be, so number one should be four thirds radians per second, because I'm navigating away from stuff, I can't quite see if you're agreeing or disagreeing, Oop, there are two chats, let's see what has to be said. I bought it for you in Germany. Okay, sorry, children. All right, then calculate the work done. And remember, code for work can be energy, change in energy. So then the work would be the change in energy, the change of energy would be the rotational um, variety. So one half, and this is where you're going to have to actually use the sizes. So after the collision, three times the one half times 250 times 2.6 squared. Didn't do the job of spacing this. Sorry, friends. Let's figure that out. There we go. Um, so this one half, and this is I, and then omega squared would be the four thirds squared minus 
one half, just one disk, which would be one half times 250 times 2.6 squared, all times, scoot, scoot, 4 squared. So remember, that's going to be your um, the rotational energy is the one half i omega squared. And so that should give you the change in rotational energy, which would be equal to the work um, done on the system during that collision because it's going to, uh, the bottom disk is going to slow down and then the top two disks are going to speed up because they weren't rotating to begin with. So there's going to have to be work done to slow down the bottom disk and then work done to speed up the top disks. So overall, you can determine the work done on the system due to this collision. Now, I'll leave that for you to, to plug in and solve.